How to apply foundation to mature skin without ending up looking dry, cakey, and older than when you started. I'm going to show you exactly how to apply your foundation so that you have that youthful, dewy, glowy look. Welcome to Pretty Over 50. I'm Kimberly and I'm really glad you're here. Today we're talking all about foundation for mature skin. So if you're looking for some tips and tricks that will help give you that glowy look, you're in the right place. If you've ever walked into an Ulta looking for foundation and you're overwhelmed with all the products there, and then someone walks up to help you and they're 22 with perfect skin and not a wrinkle in sight, I feel your frustration. That can be a very uncomfortable moment. We all wanna find a foundation application that's gonna make us look better, not worse. But when your skin gets a little bit more mature and the landscape is a little bit different, it becomes a bit of a challenge. So we're going to go over all the aspects of putting together a foundation routine that's going to make you look youthful, dewy, and glowing. We're going to do it step by step. I start my foundation application routine the night before with a heavy moisturizer that I wear on my skin overnight. Now, when we're sleeping, it gives our skin the opportunity to really absorb those really dense moisturizers. So every night after I do my Retin-A's and my serums, I use the CeraVe Night Renewing Cream. Now this is a very heavy, thick moisturizer. You can see it doesn't fall out of the thin. And it's at a drugstore price, so you don't need to spend $150 on a good night cream. You can get an excellent night cream right at the drugstore. So I'll put this on right before going to bed and it gives it my skin that hydration, that heavy hydration overnight. So I'll wake up already with moisturized skin. If you don't have a good skincare routine or one that you're really happy with, I've got a skincare video that I go over all the products that I've used on my face to really kind of get it back to a little bit of a youthful glow and I'll put it right up there for you. Now, skincare really does make a difference and I can attest to this. You know, I recently came back from traveling full time for two years and while I was gone, I was busy having fun. I was meeting people, doing exciting stuff, having a great time swimming, hiking, kayaking. I wasn't thinking about my skin. So I really didn't realize how kind of rough my skin had gotten over those two years. When I came home and looked in the mirror, I was like, oh my goodness, time to get busy. I started a very regimented skincare routine with serums and moisturizers, exfoliators, Retin-A, and about mm, four or five weeks into it, I remember touching my skin and thinking, wow, what a difference. It was so much smoother and so much more hydrated than I'd really experienced it for the last couple of years. I felt like one of those fancy ladies that has gorgeous skin. Um, so it really does make a difference. So at the very least, make sure that you wash your face in the morning and moisturize really well. Because that moisture that you've let put on your skin is really going to sink in and give you a look of hydration. And in addition, once you put that moisturizer on, make sure you allow it time to absorb into your skin. What I do is I'll do all my serums and moisturizers, put on my sunscreen, and then I'll go sit and meditate for 20 minutes to allow those products to really sink in and absorb into my skin. The next step to successful foundation application is a good primer. And I realized that primers are kind of new to us that are a little bit older. I mean, they didn't have them when I was in high school, certainly, and not in college either. But there's lots of primers out there now. And what you need a primer for is that it's really going to help your foundation lock onto your skin and stay on much longer throughout the day. Now, there's all types of primers out there, and I have several. And you're going to want to find one that's perfect for your skin type. My skin is oily in the T-zone, slightly oily, and then normal in the rest of the areas of my face. If you have dry skin, you're going to need a different primer than one that works for me. If you have very oily skin or you get breakouts, you're going to need a different kind of primer than the person with dry skin. So really understanding your skin type and looking for a primer that's going to suit your skin type is important. And you might have to try out a couple to really find one that works for you, but don't worry about it because there's a lot of wonderful primers 
at the drugstore at a great price point so that you don't have to feel like you're investing $50, $60 in something that's not gonna work for you. Now here's a few primers that you might wanna consider. I've used this. This is Master Prime by Maybelline. This is a very good all-purpose primer and I've used this for a long time and have really liked it. Now, if you have normal to oily skin, this might be a good place for you to start. Now, if you have dry skin, there is a wet and wild primer called Dewy Lumino. I don't know how to pronounce that. But this might be great for you if you have dry skin. I tried using it on my skin. It just didn't work for me. It was a hot mess because this has a real dewy, almost luminescent finish to it. So when I used it and put my foundation over it, I looked like a grease slick. So it just didn't work for me. But if you have dry skin, this might be something that you wanna check out. I have really settled on the e.l.f. Mineral Infused Primer for myself. It seems to work really well with my skin and I like it particularly well to really adhere the concealer underneath my eyes. So I've kind of found my happy place for primers. It took me a few tries to find something that really works for me and it'll probably take you a few tries as well, but stick with it. A good primer is really almost 50% of a successful foundation application. We talked about prepping our skin, a good heavy moisturizer the night before, serums and moisturizers in the morning, and getting the right primer for your skin type. Now we're off finally on to the foundation, which is what we're really talking about here. The question is, is that with all the foundations out on the market, which one do you choose? And that's that is so important. What you want to do before you even go foundation shopping is really assess what your needs are and what type of coverage you're looking for for your skin. Are you looking for just a light, dewy coverage that lets your skin shine through and just kind of evens out your skin tone? Are you looking for something like me, more of a medium coverage where I can put an extra layer in the areas that I need it? Or are you looking for full coverage? So if you go shopping and know what you're looking for beforehand, it's gonna make it a lot simpler for you to find a product that's perfect for you. Now, there's a few products out there that you might wanna consider. This is a L'Oreal BB Cream. And when you find the BB and CC creams, this is going to be a very sheer, almost mm, tinted sunscreen type of finish. This might be perfect for you, depending on what your foundation needs are. So L'Oreal has this BB cream, but there's lots and lots available out there. So if you're looking for very sheer coverage, you might try a BB or a CC cream first, and that might just be all you need. For a little bit heavier coverage, I really like this Wet n Wild foundation stick. It's Photo Focus is the line in the Wet n Wild. And when I originally got this, I didn't really care for it because I really didn't understand how to use it. But what I've learned is that this is a very sheer foundation that you can really layer. And I've layered several layers on with it and it never ends up cakey or dry. So if you're looking for kind of a sheer to medium coverage and you want something with some moisture in it, if you have a little bit dry skin or, or normal skin, this could be a good option for you. It's a very affordable price point. It's right at the drugstore. Again, you don't have to spend a lot to get a really beautiful finish for your foundation. So the foundation that I'm going to be working with today is the Revlon Color Stay. This comes in a nice glass bottle, as you can see, with a pump. And the reason that I like the pump so much is that I can pump it out onto my hand and it's not really involving any of the rest of the product that's in the bottle. When you have a bottle where you tip it out and you touch your finger to it and put it on the back of your hand, you're getting whatever's on your finger back into that bottle. So a pump is a really nice way to apply foundation products. I like this particular product because it's a medium to full coverage, which is perfect for my skin type. And this comes in different finishes. Mine is the normal to oily, and I believe they also have a normal to dry skin. So if you have drier skin, the other formula, the dry to normal, could be a good option for you. I like this foundation because it has a very dewy look. I'm wearing it right now. It covers up you know, any discolorations that I have on my face, I have a little bit of redness on my cheeks and my nose, and it does it without looking cakey or heavy. And in the areas on the sides of my face where I need to cover up sunspots, I can go back in with a second 
layer of this foundation and just pat it over those areas to cover up that discoloration and it doesn't end up looking like it's too much. So those are the basics of a very successful foundation application. Moisturizing your skin the night before very well and then washing your face and make sure that you have a great moisturizer and sunscreen on before you even start in with your primer. So what we're gonna do now is I'm gonna walk you through my entire foundation application and let's get started with that. I'm now gonna go through my entire foundation application routine with you. And as you're watching me, you might learn some tips and tricks that you'll end up incorporating into your personal routine. You'll end up developing your own little system that works for your specific skin type and the type of coverage that you're looking for. So as we go through this, just grab the things that seem relevant to your skin type and leave the rest behind. So I have done most of my makeup. I've done my eyes, my eyebrows, I've got a little lip gloss on and I try to remember to do this while I'm applying my makeup just to give my lips some hydration while I'm doing my makeup application. I don't always remember, but today I actually did. So we're going to start with actually applying a primer to the face. I've done my serums and my moisturizer. And of course, last night I used my CeraVe Night Renewing Cream. This is a heavy moisturizer, so I woke up already with skin that was very well moisturized. So just adding my serums and moisturizers and sunscreen on top of that just adds to the moisture and the dewy foundation that I have to actually start putting products on with. The very first thing I'm going to start with is a primer. I actually love this e.l.f. Mineral Infused Primer. It works really well with my skin type. Even though I'm using Retin-A, I still get a little bit of oiliness in my T-zone. So I found that this particular formula works really well for me. I have normal skin on the majority of my face and then a little oily T-zone. And this really seems to hold the product in place all day long. So what I'm going to do is just squirt a little bit of this on the back of my hand. You can see how much right there. And I'm going to start applying it to the larger planes of my face where I actually need a little bit of smoothing. A lot of primers these days will really kind of act like <laughs> a very um, thin putty. They'll kind of fill in pores and fine lines and wrinkles. So that's where I really want to concentrate that primer and you're going to end up finding a primer that works perfect for your skin and you'll learn exactly where to put it on your face to get the maximum benefit. So I'm just going to tap a little bit on my finger and then start washing that over my face. I'm going to start in the large planes of my face first. Those are the larger, flatter areas and just smooth it out. And then in the areas where I need a little bit of smoothing like right here I've got enlarged pores between my brows, you might as well. And then down into what we call, we call these the active areas of the face. And that's the areas of your face that move a lot. You know, underneath your eyes when you're a little bit older and you smile and they crinkle up. And then down in the marionette lines. So I want to make sure that I get primer in those areas so that my foundation really sticks to my skin there. Because it has a tendency to collect in those little fine lines and wrinkles are what I call them are my nooks and crannies. So I'm going to make sure that I've smoothed it over the active areas of my face, down into my chin where I've got some smoothing needed, and then with anything left I'm just going to wash it over the sides of my face. It's always best to let your primer kind of settle into the face and dry down for a bit. I usually put my primer on first or in my entire face and then I'll do my eyes and then my foundation. Today I changed it up just a little bit for this demonstration, but I'm gonna go ahead and just take a couple of minutes and let it set. That primer has had just a couple of minutes to set and dry down. And now I'm gonna start in with the foundation application. And when we're using most foundations today, there are three tools that you can use. Your fingers, a foundation brush, and a beauty sponge. So these are the three most popular tools and you'll end up having a little routine again of your own. I actually use all three and you'll watch how I do 
that application now. For foundation, I'm going to be using the Revlon Color Stay. This is in the color 220, and I believe it's Classic Ivory. This seems to work really good with my skin tone. And the reason that I like this foundation is that it provides just a bit of a dewy finish. You know, I have normal skin on the sides of my face, so having a little bit of dewy glow is nice for me in those areas. And it has, you can build it up from a medium to a full coverage. I have a lot of sunspots on the sides of my face, and you maybe have issues as well that you want to cover up. So I find that if I get a medium to full coverage foundation, I have a better chance of having those areas smoothed out and the color evened out over my face. This foundation I really like because I can build it up. I can put on a first sheerer coat and then go back in and add a little more in the areas that I need it. I'm going to start with just a small pump on the back of my hand. You can see right there how much I have. And then I'm going to take my fingers, the first tool, tap it into it and just start patting that foundation around the areas of my face. Now I have to remember to get the sides of my face so that I hit those areas where I have sunspots and discoloration. And of course in the middle of my face I have a little bit of redness and you know a few little veins showing through so I want to make sure that I get coverage there as well. And then for me, I have some discoloration between my eyebrows, but the rest of my forehead is okay. So I try to just focus on the center area and then shear the foundation out towards the sides. So think about that when you're considering your own skin. What areas do you really want to smooth the color out and what areas don't need it? Because those areas that you don't need it, if the color match is really good for your skin, you won't need much foundation there. The second tool I'm going to use is a blending foundation brush. Now this foundation brush is from Real Techniques. You can find any foundation brush that works for you. And really drugstore pricing in brushes right now is just fine. The quality is really terrific. In a foundation brush, what you want is you want soft bristles. And you can see how the top of that brush is rather flat. That's going to help that foundation be smoothed out over the skin. Now when you're using your foundation brush, you want to use a really light touch because you don't want to be moving your skin with the brush. You want to just be moving the foundation over the skin. So a lighter touch with the foundation brush is really better. So I'm going to start again with the large planes of my face and then start smoothing it out to the other areas as well. This foundation is really wonderful. It blends in very smoothly and really provides quite a bit of coverage right out of the gate. You can see right here, a lot of my sunspots have disappeared. A few still show through a little bit, but I really just put a very light coverage of this foundation there. And then in the areas where I don't need much coverage up here on the sides of my forehead, I just really shear out what's left on my brush over those areas. So I'm using a very light touch, trying not to move the skin, but just the product over the skin. Now for the active areas of the face, of course we're not going to put foundation underneath our eyes, that's where our concealer goes, but I have deep lines in the marionette areas, and you might as well, and I have particularly deep crevices down in the lower marionette area. So in these areas, what I want to do is keep the foundation very sheer so it has less chance of settling in those deeper lines. So I really go over those areas and smooth them out so that foundation coverage is really, really thin. You want to make sure as well to take the foundation down past this chin line into 
the starting of your neck area so you don't have a real demarcation of foundation right there in your chin. We've all seen people that just missed that and you can really tell when the foundation stops right there. So make sure that you really blend it and smooth it underneath your chin and slightly into your neck area. I've really worked that foundation with the foundation brush over my skin and you can see how pretty the coverage looks. Now what I noticed in my magnifying mirror here is I still have a few of my age spots on the side that are showing through. So I'm gonna go back in with just a little bit more product onto the back of my hand, dab my finger in those and just hit those areas that need a little bit more coverage. That way I'm not caking up the rest of my face with more foundation than is needed. So I'm just gonna blend that in And that's really doing a beautiful job of covering up those sunspots. Now that I have that foundation blended in all over my face and I've got the coverage in the areas that I need it, it's time to use the third tool that I use and that's a beauty sponge. So I'm gonna take my beauty sponge and I'm gonna dampen it just slightly with my water bottle. Kind of squeeze out that water so it really works into the sponge. I want just a very, very slightly damp sponge. And I'm gonna take that sponge, the flat end, the flat side right here, and I'm gonna start again in the flat, larger planes of my face and just press that foundation into my skin. Now, if you end up using this technique, what you're going to notice is that sponge this surface of the sponge really creates such a satiny finish of the foundation. I've really found that the finish of using a sponge is just gorgeous. It, it can't, I can't seem to get it with my fingers or a brush, so I really like finishing up my foundation application with the beauty sponge. Again, I'm gonna make very sure that I press in the foundation in those active areas of my face where my face is moving a lot so that foundation has the very best chance of staying where I put it in those deep lines and crevices. As you move the sponge around your face, it's gonna pick up just a little bit of product and kind of move that product around into other areas. So it's really a nice way to finish up a foundation application. I'm not sure if you can really see it on the camera, but the finish that that beauty sponge has given the foundation is really, really pretty. If you haven't tried this, I recommend that you, you just do it once or twice and see how you like it. I think that you'll notice a real difference in the lasting finish of the foundation. Now that I have that foundation worked in smoothly all over my face, I'm gonna go in with just a little bit of setting powder. Now for my skin, I don't need a lot because I really only get oily in the T-zone area. But I do wanna provide a little bit of mattifying in that area and also very lightly set the rest of the foundation across my face. A very light hand I found to be the very best way to do this because too much powder can give us that cakey, packed on makeup look. But just a little bit of sheer powder will really help to set that foundation. You're not gonna be able to see the powder on your skin and it's really going to help that foundation last much longer throughout the day. I like to use the ELF HD Finishing Powder. This is a powder that I just kind of stumbled upon and used it on a lark one day. I wasn't really expecting much from it, but I've ended up really, really liking it. I use it to set my concealer under my eyes and I also use it to set my foundation and it doesn't get cakey on me and it doesn't produce a color because it's a translucent powder. So it's not really looking like another product on top of my skin. I'm just gonna take my brush and lightly dab it into the powder, tap off any excess, and then I'm just gonna lay that brush around the areas of my face 
that I want to make sure that that foundation is really set. I always make sure that I hit the active areas of my face so that foundation will stay put and not collect into those wrinkles during the day. Now that we have that foundation on our face and a setting powder on, it's always nice to kind of finish with a setting spray. And if you haven't used a setting spray before, that's okay. It's just a nice added step. And what it will do is really help those products kind of melt into each other and have a much more smoother appearance and keep your makeup on longer during the day. I've been using the Catrice Prime and Fine. This has a very fine mist and I just put a very light spray over my face to really help that foundation settle into my skin and then stay on my face where I put it all day long. So there we have it, a full face of foundation on mature skin, and I think you'll see that the application really looks pretty. It really enhances my face instead of making it look more cakey and older and more dry and really has smoothed out the colors and hidden some of the age spots that I have. So I'm gonna jump off right now, finish my face with my contour bronzers, blushes, and I'll be right back. So you can see that a successful foundation application can really make mature skin look younger, more dewy, and just prettier all the way around. I hope you found this helpful. If you did, it'd be great to, if you could give me a like. And if you're interested in these types of videos, skincare, makeup, and style for the over 50 woman, make sure you click the subscribe button and the little notification bell so you don't miss any of my upcoming videos. I really appreciate your time today and I'm so glad that you stopped by. Again, this is Pretty Over 50. I'm Kimberly and I will see you in the next video. Bye now.